Hey, it's Ben Mankiewicz along with Rookie Mankiewicz, and Rookie has an important message for you. Subscribe to TYT Sports by clicking here. Nice job, pal. Yesterday, when we were talking about the coverage, uh, I, I was praising the specific ESPN reporter who was in that crowd, and we, we ran a clip of that. Um, I thought he did a nice job under difficult, difficult circumstances. Um, in the crowd of students overnight when the idiots were rioting. Um, I feel like that's offensive to most idiots. Um, <laughs> uh, and you pointed out that the ESPN coverage had not been stellar, and you, you, I had not really watched ESPN as the story developed. I'd really, I, I read so much about this story, but you know, part of what I, I guess I might have read is why I, 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 at least in the early stages, I knew so much more than everybody, uh, because I wasn't watching TV. I was reading the crap out of the story, and I was reading Pennsylvania papers. And uh, well, it turns to the Pointer Institute, and they sort of analyze uh, the media coverage, and they have a partnership with ESPN, for which ESPN gets enormous praise, because the whole point of this partnership is for uh, the Pointer Institute to watch their coverage and tell them when their coverage blows. And here's what the Pointer Institute has to say about ESPN's early Penn State coverage. It totally blew. They did not get it, which supports exactly what you were saying. So the story broke on Saturday, this piece from Jason Fry and Kelly McBride, who we should get on this program um, at, from the Pointer Institute, uh, that on Saturday the story breaks. Obviously, is it's stunning in its totality, and it took some time to digest as you read through it, and you realize, holy crap, I think Joe Paterno's got to go. Like, how, how, how does this go on, man? He's Joe Paterno. When you're reading it, you're processing it, like talking to other people about it, sort of feeling out what the right way to go is here. Uh, and then this is a quote from this piece on, uh, from the Pointer Institute on ESPN. A lot of credit for being on ESPN. With the biggest, ESPN.com, with the biggest staff of sports journalists in the world, it reads here, ESPN should have been leading the charge to ask tough questions and shed light on this scandal. Instead, says the Pointer Institute, it was the tiny Patriot News in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, out in front of the journalism pack. Their reporters managed to track down two mothers of boys Sandusky allegedly abused, and the paper had the leadership to write a front page editorial calling for Penn State trustees to clean house. Meanwhile, it says here, Again, reading from this piece. Meanwhile, the tone of the early ESPN coverage was spotty, sometimes getting it right, but more often seeming inappropriate, which is, I think, what you saw, right, Rick? Inappropriate. It wasn't until mid-afternoon Tuesday that ESPN finally seemed to consistently ask the right questions, find the appropriate moral outrage by the end of the day Tuesday. That's 72 hours after the story first broke, they point out. Um, they said they were particularly alarmed Tuesday morning when the ESPN and its vast resources seemed to be behind the curb, failing to turn up new information, sounding tone deaf. Uh, on Monday, they ran a blog post here on College Football Nation by Adam Rittenberg, and I don't mean to call him out in particular, but talking about how the scandal would affect Penn State recruiting. Uh, granted, these are all relevant questions. The world of college football is big. Obviously, at some point, you get to talk about how it's going to affect recruiting and how where, where Penn State will go as a bowl game. Does any bowl team really want them now? Uh, who knows? Maybe they do. Maybe that's an unfair thing to punish these guys who are still there in any way. In fact, it is unfair to punish them, but it's a, those are reasonable conversations. But on the Monday that it's breaking, it seemed weird that that's like one of ESPN's first things was a piece about uh, recruiting. By Tuesday, they expected ESPN to find its footing, it says, but it didn't. After the news conference was canceled on SportsCenter, that's when, and I heard this on Howard Stern, Chris McKendry, the anchor, is interviewing Matt Millen. And Matt Millen is, like, breaking up and starts to cry. Former defensive tackle at Penn State. Linebacker. Former linebacker Penn State. You sure it's linebacker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Millen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and, uh, uh, I mean, he played linebacker in the NFL, and I'm pretty sure he played linebacker at Penn State. So, uh, uh, yeah, no, he's part of linebacker U. He was in the heyday there. So Millen himself, uh, he's still working through the charges, and, and he gets really emotional, and he talked about how initially he started defending Paterno's job, cautioning folks to withhold judgment of the legendary coast. Then pressed by McKendry, he started to meander a little bit. He choked up. They point out not to fault Millen. It was emotional for him, but he's the wrong guy to have on right now. And it says it wasn't until college game day later in the day on Tuesday that uh, Kirk Herbstreet came in. Kirk Herbstreet is awesome at every single thing he has ever done, near as I can tell. Except on Ohio State people hate him. Well, I don't know. That doesn't matter. They're insane. College football fans are literally insane. They like him. They hate him for not being Homer enough. En enough, I know. He's great, man. He's a great broadcaster. And he's just great. And it says that when he got there, then everyone in the air finally started to uh, uh, fully uh, appreciate and articulate uh, and ask hard-hitting questions and express some moral outrage. And then they, he criticizes uh, Around the Horn for treating it on Tuesday like a second-day story. Just an update on Matt Millen. 
He was recruited out of Whitehall High School by Pennsylvania State University, where he became an All-American defensive tackle. All right, I stand, uh, <laughs> I stand uh, corrected. But he played. I'm not crazy. He played linebacker in the NFL, right? Yeah, he, he did, played right? defensive tackle for the Nittany Lions. Good work, Rick. Um, so. Uh, uh, at any rate, he, uh, he was the wrong guy to have on. And then finally, Outside the Lines, they point out, did a very good job. Outside the Lines almost always does a good job. Howard Bryant, he wrote a great piece. You should read everything Howard Bryant writes on ESPN. Herb Street did a nice job reiterating his analysis. Grantland writer Michael Weinreb uh, did a good job. It says, articulating the mythical culture of football in State College. Uh, I read that piece by Michael Weinreb at uh, grantland.com through ESPN. That was outstanding. Hi, this is Ben Mankiewicz along with Rookie Mankiewicz. And Rookie has an important message for you. Subscribe to TYT Sports.